When Jesus saw the crowds start to form, he walked up on a mountainside above them and sat down. His disciples came over beside him. Jesus started to teach the people. When you feel oppressed and helpless all the way down to your spirit, remember this blessing. Heaven's kingdom is your home. If you've loved someone enough to mourn them when they're gone, God has blessed you. Now he'll comfort you. If you've been humbled in life, you've got a big inheritance coming. God's world belongs to you. The hunger you feel inside for kindness and justice and all things godly, it's a blessing from God. So is the meal he'll serve. Show mercy and get mercy. It's the way God's blessing works. If your heart is good with God, you're gonna see him. You're blessed if you're a peacemaker because people will recognize you as a child of God. They'll see the resemblance. When you're ridiculed and persecuted for doing the right thing, remember this blessing. You carry the keys to heaven. Consider it a good and godly blessing when people insult you, lie about you, and make life miserable for you just because you walk a different path following me. Be glad about it because heaven is ahead and it's your reward. What's happening to you happened to God's hand-picked prophets long ago. You're the salt of the earth seasoning and purifying it with wisdom. But if the salt goes stale, how can you make it palatable again? It's good for nothing but walking on. You light up this dark world. You're like a city on a hilltop. You can't hide a city like that. Who wants to hide a light anyhow? People don't put a light under a bucket. They raise it up. When they put it on a stand, it can light up the whole house. So let your light rise and shine. Let people see it in the compassionate work you do for others and in other ways. That's how you make your Father in Heaven look good. Don't think for one second that I came to repeal and replace our Bible, erasing the laws of Moses or the books of the prophets. I didn't come to finish them off. I came to finish what they started. I'm telling you the truth. Heaven will fall and earth will disappear before anyone erases even the tiniest curl on the tip of a letter in the law. The law is going to reach its goal. So I want you to know that anyone who lightens up on even one of the least important commandments in the law and teaches others to do it too, that person is going to be one of the least important in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys the law and teaches others to do it too, that person's going to be big in the kingdom of heaven. Let me tell you something. If you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, make sure that you're a better human being and more acceptable to God than the scribes or the Pharisees. I know you've heard that our ancestors from long ago were told you're not to murder, and murderers will be held accountable. Well, I'm telling you that anyone who gets mad at someone will be held accountable. And anyone who trashes someone with an insult will have to stand in front of others and answer for it. Furthermore, anyone who addresses someone as you fool is going to get burned when it's time to pass judgment. So let's say you bring your offering to the worship center and suddenly you remember that someone is mad at you. Get up, leave your offering there, and go work things out with that person. Then come back and worship. It's okay to give your offering then. If someone accuses you of something and takes you to court, work things out before you get there. If you don't, the prosecution might win the case. Then you could find yourself bounced from the judge to the guard to the prison. I'm telling you the truth. There is no way you're going to get out of prison until you've paid every last penny the judge says you owe. 
You've heard the commandment, you are not allowed to commit adultery. But I'm telling you that if you look at a woman with lingering lust, that's all it takes. You've already committed adultery with her in your head. If your right eye lures you into sin, pull it out and throw it away. You're better off sacrificing part of your body to save your whole body from getting pitched into the trash heap of Gehenna Valley. If your right hand makes you sin, cut that thing off and throw it away. It's better to sacrifice part of your body to save your whole body from getting pitched into the trash heap of Gehenna Valley. We've been told anyone who wants to divorce his wife should put it in writing and give her the written notice. Well, I'm telling you people this. You shouldn't divorce your wife unless she commits a sex sin. Otherwise, it would be your fault when she commits adultery, and adultery is what she and her new husband would be committing if she married someone else. Since the time of our ancestors, we've been told, when you make a vow in the name of the Lord, keep your promise. Well, I'm telling you, not to make vows like that. Don't swear by high heaven that you're gonna do something. Heaven is where God reigns. And don't swear by the earth beneath your feet that you're gonna do something. The earth is God's footrest. And don't think of swearing by Jerusalem. It's the city of the great king. And don't swear by the head on your shoulders that you're gonna do something. You can't even make a single hair on your head, white or black. Instead of making elaborate vows like that, keep it simple. Either say, yes, you will do what you've been asked, or no, you won't. If you say anything more than that, you're getting your words from the devil. You've been taught, if you take an eye from me, I'll take an eye from you. If you take a tooth from me, I'll take a tooth from you. I'm telling you, don't try to stop a bad person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn your face and offer the other cheek too. If someone wants to sue the shirt off your back, give it to them. Then give them your coat too. If a Roman soldier employs his right to order you to carry some of his gear for a mile, go the extra mile for him. If someone asks you for something, give it to them. If they want to borrow something, let them. Don't turn them down. You've been told, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, I'm telling you something different. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Pray for people who treat you badly. When you do this, people will see how much you resemble your Father in heaven, for He shows His love to everyone. He brings the sun up in the morning and makes it shine on the bad and the good. And He sends the rain to shower the innocent and the guilty. If you love only the people who love you, do you really think you're gonna get a reward for that? Come on, even tax collectors show a little love to the people who love them, right? And if you show hospitality to your family and your friends, so what? Even people who aren't Jews do that, don't they? But here's what you're supposed to do. Follow your father's perfect example of love for others. Get it right. If you like this video, would you give it a thumbs up? My mother counts those. If you like this kind of Bible background, subscribe to my channel and my blog. I've got books you might like, and I've been working on a free online Bible paraphrase, the Casual English Bible. Hey, thanks for watching. Peace to you.